Thank you very much for coming on and to teach something that most people might who make it might think it's really simple. But I've been trying to make it so that this show is about sharing what you make and sharing what I make and what I think is simple to make, right? And so. Um, yeah, so I first uh, used to work off of a recipe that was in a cookbook called Whole Foods for the Whole Family, um, which is put together by La Leche League, which is a um, organization that promotes breastfeeding and, and sort of healthy child rearing or whatever. So that's kind of where this came from. The, the quantity that they suggested I thought was way too much and um, certain things like you can put dried fruit in there or different things, but it was just like too complicated to chop up. So the, I what notice you don't have raisins and I pretty much think granola, I don't know. It's just kind of yeah, a standard. And... I, I know what you mean. I think for me, raisins or other dried fruit or fresh fruit, I like to just add sprinkle on top mm. in the bowl that I'm going to eat it as opposed Good to idea. the granola. Because... I do remember us growing up, we'd make the granola with the raisins in there and sometimes they'd mm -hmm. end up being a little bit burnt or crunchy or like not. So maybe like make the granola and add the raisins at the end. Yeah. So I will pan over my setup here to show people either if people are following along or um, if they wanna think about making it later. So. You want a baking sheet that has sides to it. Um, you want a sort of stirring or fan flipping implement. I have a wooden spoon. Um, you want a medium to large saucepan with high sides. That's pretty much the equipment. And then I'm gonna be- And I use this one, it's not really high sided. Um, you can try, just be careful when you're adding stuff that it doesn't overflow. Okay. Um, I, you, you caught me with my ma biggest problem is I overdo it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah when, I, when I'm sauteing things, I crowd the pan for sure. Um, and then I just have an assortment of measuring cups and one measuring spoon. I love this big measuring cup I got from Costco that has up to four cups in there. I just, I've not used it yet. I just got it. Four cups. <laughs> yeah, my, my old one is probably, my old one is probably 10 years old and it's like kind of, look at the difference in color. Wow. They're both glass. And then this is chipped. Yeah. So my old one. But yeah, that's a, um, a two cup and like I just got a new four cup one. I haven't even used it yet. Oh, I'm excited. Okay. All right. So the first thing I do is I measure out my material, my ingredients. So I put the ingredients list in the chat. But so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, measure out about three cups of oats. Let's go over the ingredients to make sure I have everything. Okay. So um, first thing, I definitely have enough oats because I've been making a lot of oatmeal cookies. To Ooh. And I ran out once and I was like, never again. So I got a big bag. <laughs> um, flour. So I'm, I am gluten sensitive. Have you ever made it with another I kind of flour? I think it would probably be okay without the flour. What the flour does is essentially like binds the nuts and the oats together. So uh, I was thinking bit. of making a one with the gluten that I could give away. How hard would it be to make two batches? I don't think it would be hard. If you have room on your stovetop for two um, different pans. I've got rice just flour. Divide two. And then I've got all purpose. All right. I'm trying. And I, I'm trying to think if I've ever made it without the flour. Um, I can't remember, really but I crunch. imagine it would be okay. Probably but it really gives the crunch and what binds it together. Flour, I think. Maybe. Yeah, you could substitute a gluten-free flour, I would imagine, or you could just do a little bit extra oats. Okay. Um, well, I like okay. the extra oat part. Yeah. Eliminate one ingredient makes it a little there easier. There you go. Sure. And then um, 
whatever nuts and seeds that you have around. Did you say nuts? Yeah. Um, I'm the only one, so. Um, <laughs> so technically, so when I like to cook stuff, I like to, unless I know it's just going to be for me, I like to try to make it allergy free. Mm -hmm. So if you use sunflower seeds. Yeah, any of these, if I could get, except for the oats, anything is probably optional. Um, and then so if you cashews, put enough, cashews okay. are allergy free. Those are okay. also a seed or almonds. Mm -hmm. Those are allergy free too. So. Okay. Um, and then uh, vanilla extract. Yeah. Uh, something to sweeten it. I like to use both honey and maple syrup. All right. So anybody who's into maple syrup probably thinks this is sacrilegious, but this is Illinois maple syrup. <laughs> it's just like, we do have maple trees in Illinois. It takes like three times as much water to make the syrup oh. because it's not as sweet as the North. And then you need an oil as well. I use one stick of butter and that's a really nice quantity control. And it's also a really good taste. I like the results with it. If you wanted to make it vegan, you could just use some sort of oil that you would cook in. All right. And um, a stick of butter is eight tablespoons. But so I'm gonna measure out the oats to be three cups. I'm going to do a little bit more because I'm going to try to make it without flour. Yeah. All right. Um, and then I measure out next my wheat germ, which I make to be roughly half a cup. And I just throw it on top in my same measuring cup, but you can do it separately too. But you did say that was optional. It's optional. The wheat germ is sort of like the flour. It's just for binding, but um, binding it together. And I swear I have some around here somewhere, but um, I grew up, we always put that in oatmeal when you cook fresh oatmeal or yogurt or I don't know, just on salads. Yeah. Um, what is it? Couscous. You can almost use it in a lot of situations. You would use breadcrumbs. Um, add a little crunch on something, but okay. Um, oh shoot, <laughs> I did it backwards. I meant to put the flour in first. Oh well, it's not a big deal. Um, I'm gonna do a half cup of flour as well for, for others who want to use that, you can, or you can skip it. So you're just putting it all in that. That's like perfect. The four cup, just like exactly. you can put almost all the ingredients in the same. And I, I basically, to... <laughs> when I, at the point where I'm adding things on the stove top, the dry ingredients just get added gradually all at once. So I just kind of pour it from the same thing. Um, and so then um, I do, I do one cup of nuts one cup of seeds. All right. But you can divide it however you want. So is any of these ingredients like a certain amount of it critical? I don't think so. This is just the balance that I like. I really like to have some crunch in there. So I um, do plenty of nuts and, and I like the variety of both nuts and seeds, but you could do two cups of nuts and no seeds, two cups of seeds and no nuts. I'm almost out of sesame, I mean, um, sunflower seeds here. So I'm gonna add some pumpkin seeds in. So I just pulled this out. Have you ever had a chocolate nibs? Chocolate what? Nibs. No. So these, if you get a cocoa bean and then they cut, they break them up. And so this is like not quite ground up, but it's literally a fresh cocoa bean chopped up and you can they've been roasted and you can eat them just like this but if you like chocolate 
These don't melt. Okay, they're just that's beans. good to know. Um, they're not very cheap, but it's like, if you want to elevate, um, I don't know, any anything you bake or heat or, so I'm going to put, I don't know, maybe a quarter cup of that in here. Because, but yeah, this is like when I have a desire for some chocolate, I'll have some of this and it's just pure cocoa. Yeah. I keep chocolate chips on hand for the same reason, like instead of necessarily having a chocolate bar. Just... This has like no sugar, no nothing. It's just the cocoa bean. But that's been. All right. So we've got the I've got cashews and sunflowers and a little bit of the chocolate nibs. Great. OK. So where are you putting all this? I'm just kind of having it next to the stove because it's going to be poured in the pot one by one. Okay, oops. Mine's almost overflowing. Oh, okay. yeah, be careful. It's almost, I, I'm glad you, you thought of dividing it into two pans. I think given the pan you showed me, that might be better. Yeah, my pan, that's that, that size pan right now is in the fridge full. <laughs> okay. So now um, preheat your oven to 325. That way it'll be ready for us because um, we're just going to kind of heat everything, throw it together on the stovetop first, and then spread it on the cookie sheet and put it into bake. All right. Now with your butter, was that salted or unsalted? Doesn't matter. I think and my I mom did mention that these sunflower seeds were salted and she's like, make sure you don't add any salt to the recipe. The sunflower seeds are already salted. We're not going to add any salt, but I use salted nuts. One time I used a um, like Cajun flavored peanut as Oops. as within as one of the nuts. Not not everything, but oh, that was so good. It was uh, good. It was. I liked a little bit of spiciness and with the sweetness. Ooh. I, but, now um, that I think about it, I think a granola with garam masala. Because mm. what's in garam masala? Um, garam masala is cardamom, cinnamon, cloves, cumin, black pepper, and coriander. So yeah. Just put a little bit of that in there. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to melt the whole stick of butter in my pot here. Um, on an electric stove top, I would say put it to medium. On a gas top, I would say medium low. So you just want to melt it and not burn it. Yeah, melt it. Just kind of get every getting everything warm enough to uh, mix it all together well. Like but you it's said not you can use any cooker. kind of oil. You can use oil instead of butter if you want. Would you like a flyover? All right. Sure. Yeah. And how often do you think you make like a batch of this granola? I would say this quantity when I was living alone and I would eat it for breakfast most days, it would last me about two weeks. So I was making it every two weeks or so. Um, now we don't eat it as often, but we're both eating it and I make it maybe every month or so. It's really easy and the cleanup's not really too bad, although, you know, we're putting, we're going to be putting honey and maple syrup in the, in the pot. So that does need to be cooked. I mean, um, washed kind of quickly or it gets really sticky <laughs> if you let it yeah. sit around. So what is something you think we shouldn't put in? I mean, you, you've already mentioned spicy nuts were fine. Spicy nuts were fine. I put chia seeds in once and they just made a huge mess. So I choose, I just saved the chia seeds and sprinkled them Oh, chia, them. I thought you said cheese seeds. I was like, what are <laughs> chia seeds. seeds? I'm learning some new product. So I'm chia gonna pour in some maple syrup here. My butter stick is about half melted. I, I just eyeball for this. I don't measure it, but I would say it's about roughly like a quarter cup. 
I, I like it sweet. <laughs> And it's for the whole thing, you know, it's going to cover a whole cookie sheet worth of granola. And so a quarter um, cup of maple syrup and a quarter cup of honey or? Yeah. Just right in the butter. Right in the butter. Ah, the smell of good local honey. Now, if you don't pour it into a measuring cup, there's nothing you have to clean. Exactly. And if you put too much in, I guess it'll be too sweet and then you'll have to eat it with more yogurt. Exactly. Yeah, I actually I really enjoy eating it with plain yogurt. And then I think that's a really nice balance. This granola by itself is pretty sweet. I don't necessarily just drink it, just have it with milk. I like it with plain yogurt with just a little bit of that tanginess to balance it out. OK, question. Do You make your own yogurt. I do not. So we do, I, I sat with my mom and we recorded a little short video on how to make your own yogurt and it is on the YouTube channel. So oh, cool. basically if you have old milk that's past its due date, you either make yogurt or you make cheese. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be good to know actually. The, um, my instant pot came with a, a recipe for yogurt, but it basically you had to start with yogurt to begin with, and then you added more stuff to, I guess, I guess, increase the quantity of it. I'm like, well, if I'm buying yogurt anyway. Well, you just need a couple, you need a start. So you just need a couple spoonfuls. But yeah. um, I mean, think about it. How much does a, a quart of yogurt cost and how much does a gallon of milk cost? Good point. And all it so is- So you're is also gonna time. add a, a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Oops, I'm actually gonna measure that one. Yeah. Because vanilla is very easy to overdo it. Exactly. Now you said teaspoon, not tablespoon. Correct, teaspoon. Oop, I think I just did a little more of that. And then a quarter cup of water. I actually do measure this out because I don't have to wash the um, measuring cup and also because I don't want to overdo it on the water, whereas I'm not really mad about overdoing it on the Maple syrup or honey. <laughs> Just a quarter cup. Wait, we're pouring that in, right? <laughs> yeah. All Just... into the pan. So at this point, my butter is melted. So my butter is almost Seriously. melted. So in the yeah. pan, we've got the butter, the honey, the vanilla, the maple syrup, and a quarter cup of water. Yes. Okay, and then next I add the nuts. Um, when I first was making it, the recipe said just, you know, add everything together all at once. But I think that the, I like the results the best when the nuts get maximum amount of butter. And uh, it's almost like browning them a little bit. Not maybe browning is not the right word, but I like the results better when the nuts get plenty of access to the butter. And then the seeds. And we're still at like a low heat. Yeah, me, if you're electric, I would say medium for gas, medium to low. Just all enough right. to melt the butter, essentially. Well, now all I have to do is add some water to this and add the oatmeal to it. And I've got the best oatmeal for breakfast ever. Yeah, that's true. You could just do it that <laughs> way. And so now I'm going to start <laughs> adding my dry ingredients. Ideally, I wish I had put the wheat germ last on top because I like the way those coat the nuts, but it's fine, whatever. So mm. just adding the dry ingredient a little bit at a time and stirring it in to distribute well. Oh, turn my camera. <laughs> so quick question, the flour, <laughs> the wheat germ and the oats are going in gradually now? Yes. Yeah, all of them. Yeah, a little bit at a time. Well, like I yeah. said, if you just added some water to this, this would be like the best oatmeal ever. Mm -hmm. If I wanted to make, this is a great drink. Mm. It's, yeah, it's really good. Um, like when it's done, it's really good with like a mixture of peanut butter and fresh fruit. Like for breakfast. Yeah, Austin it's like puts this. it with peanut butter, not doesn't necessarily have a dairy product. And my mm -hmm. mixed nuts don't include peanuts. Um, yeah. 
at least not this time around yeah. with what we've got. I mean, and my um, things are getting a little hot for me. So I'm going to turn off the, just turn off the burner because at this point I'm just kind of mixing stuff. So you just need to mix it until everything is coated and it's all soaked up, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah exactly. Or are you so trying kind of, to... It has to get done a little bit quickly. I'm probably kind of artificially making it slower here. So, but just we, use your instinct. Are we also yeah. trying to make it so that all the moisture is evaporated or most of it? Yeah, it, the, during the last little bit, it's a, a tiny bit of elbow grease to kind of get everything mixed together. Um, and speaking of, if you get tired and want to swap, I can Okay. I can sub. I know it does get a bit tough. Uh, yeah, I was, <laughs> I'm just wondering, because I didn't put any flour in, if I want to add just a little bit more oats in here because to soak up that last little bit of moisture. Because you're trying to make this your instinct on that. Mine is not um, like soupy at all. It's yeah. pretty much dry at this point. Yeah, yeah mine's they're... mine's there. Like if I pull it back, oh, there's just a little bit of moisture on the bottom, and you can hear it like yeah, you know, frying mm -hmm. or evaporating. Mm -hmm. I usually turn off the burner at some point, like halfway through, when I'm adding the dry ingredients. Oh, it smells so good, though. Yeah, you certainly just want to cover it uh, the best you can. Um, now, I noticed you didn't really put any spices. Like, nope. you know, maybe... Pretty much, uh, it's just sweetened, and then the nuts are already salted. So, um, I mean, is there any reason why you couldn't put, like, some cinnamon or nutmeg or... But, or you just prefer to... You could. I just like the way it tastes as is. Yeah. I like the, how simple this is. Yeah. So if I mean, you're not using salted nuts, do you want to add a, should I add a little bit of salt to that? I would say optional. I think you could and it would be great, but I think it would also be fine either way. Can I taste it now and make a decision? I tasted mine. Mine. Yeah. And I'm just good. spreading it out on a cookie sheet now. Flat as flat as possible. All right. You did mention the oven preheating, right? Yep, we've preheated yep. the oven to 325. So mine is ready. Okay. Hopefully others are too. Yeah. And now you just said, so this is a, a batch for just one tray? Yep, yes. one tray worth. Mm -hmm. So you don't um, want to like you can you can double it. I just find it sort of a challenge to juggle the two pans and no, I right. meant like do I want to spread it out on two trays, make it thinner? Oh um mm -hmm. for the quantities that I quoted with the three cups of oats and a total of three cups of everything else, or you know, substituting oats for flour, I one sheet is sufficient. Well, I'm just, this is all, I mean, it's rounded up, so I was just wondering. If you, know, you spread it out spread to the out. edges, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and it should be like, I don't know, what is this? I mean, it, the pan sizes are, are different, but like here, it's like maybe, what, like a quarter of an inch thick or whatever? It's not, oh, yeah, it's, not spread, too, it's basically it's not, going right up to the edge of the lip. Yeah, 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 all exactly. the way to the edge. Mm -hmm. We're gonna be flipping it when it's cooking, so. Oh, I just got scared. I like a little tingled. It's like the idea of flipping it. Ooh. Well, uh, <laughs> sort of not in a mixed. fancy chef way, just in a way where I like pick it up like this. And, you know, <laughs> if we just got two like trays, you could just it. flip one tray onto the other tray. You too. Yeah, you could do that. Well, I could try to do that. <laughs> I mean, they do that on those fancy chef shows. I mean, uh, it, you, know, you, you know that they've off. messed that up like 20 times and they just show the video of the one they yeah, do. Right, they do yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. So I'm going to stick mine in the oven now. Okay, we are going in. It goes in for a total of 30 minutes. So we're going to pull it out and turn it. I flip it. it every 10. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to set the timer up here for 10. Okay. So say I that again, 30, 30 minutes? Yeah, I set a timer for 30 minutes and then a second timer for 10 minutes. That's the way I do it. Yep. 
So she set for 30 and I set for 10 and at 10 we will flip it. I'm gonna put this Okay, back. so clarify, set it for 10 minutes, we flip it. Uh, so I set 30? two timers, I set one for 30 minutes and then a second one for 10 minutes and the 10 minutes is when I take it out to, to flip it over. Okay, so you I'll could just, mine. if you have only one, you could set for 30 and just watch it. <laughs> But I don't, I don't I have to take it out at 10 minutes to flip it? You do take it out in 10 minutes to flip it. So let me set my timer for 10. I've just uh, got a... Yeah, however you want to do it. <laughs> here, where is it? Oh, here we go. At 10, set the timer for 10 minutes and we'll flip it. Yeah. So now if this was one of those fancy shows, we would just take one out and show it right now. I know. <laughs> you pull that out of the oven already. Though. Um. So what I think I'm going to do is make another batch with flour. So. so who else is cooking along? Lulu? Okay. Lulu is definitely. I am. That's why I was late. I didn't have any. I had all the ingredients except for the wheat germ. Oh, okay. Yeah. But you didn't I notice that it was optional either. <laughs> I mislabeled it. I meant for the wheat germ to be the optional one because I know it's a bit of a rare ingredient. Oh, no, I kind of, I wanted to have it. I had uh, nutritional yeast. Oh, uh, yeah, I bet that would work. It's great on popcorn. Mm -hmm. Nutritional yeast? Mm -hmm. Is nutritional uh, yeast savory? It's, yeah, it's or, similar to wheat germ. Yeast, I have always considered it as savory. Nutty. A nutty flavor. Nutty? That probably will go well. That's true. It is nutty flavor. But it is more on the savory as opposed to sweet. Mm -hmm. So right, with so this, this I mean, you can kind of just use whatever you have. I, again, the oats are kind of essentially essential. That's what makes it oatmeal. <laughs> and you need some sort of oil to bind it together. Um, otherwise, so let's the, see, the, three cups and then one cup. Of, oh, wait, was it one cup or half a cup of flour? Half a cup. Uh, yeah, I do half a cup of flour, half a cup of wheat germ, and those total make one more cup of dry. So total four cups of dry ingredients. Um, mm -hmm. It's a cup of nuts. Anyway. And a cup of nuts and a cup of seeds. Cup of so seeds. total of yeah. six cups of overall ingredients, and that's the breakdown that I like, but you can always experiment with it to see what you like. After you bake it, um, do, you, do you ever add... Uh, raisins or you just add raisins when you're eating it I just add when I eat when I eat it so I you know put my yogurt in the bowl and then I sprinkle the um, granola on top of that and then on top of the granola whatever add thing I'm going to add either raisins or chocolate chips or um, blueberries. blueberries are one of my favorites other fresh berries um, chia seeds peanut butter and bananas Austin likes it oh. with peanut butter the granola and banana Oh, so good. <laughs> uh, I, I'm thinking of experimenting with this to make it more of like a trail mix that I could carry around and eat. I think in that case, I would put eat more flour to make it clump together even more. You want to swap your sound so the sound is on oh. um, your laptop? Or just... Yeah, you are. You can see it. Um, so I guess what was the question was... Is there something you put in and you felt like you didn't like? I miss that. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, great. I, hmm. I tried to switch the sounds on the appropriate devices. Hopefully I'm not creating any bad sounds. I've never, um, the only bad experience I had adding things in was um, the chia seeds, adding it in during the cooking process because it just, they just got everywhere and were really irritating to clean. And it didn't improve my experience to have it in the granola versus just sprinkled on top at the end. Um, so and then chia, I also- Chia seeds, raisins at the end. Yeah. Um, what was the other one I've done at the end? Hemp seeds. Uh, mm -hmm. um, I like for the nuts to get kind of toasted in the oven. So that's what the, I think the advantage of adding them during this point in the process. Um, but All right. 
I mean, really it's flexible. You can do whatever you want. I'm just showing you kind of what I've come to. I bet it could be improved on. Like I bet adding cinnamon or other spices could make it good. I just keep it really simple. I like how simple it is. Yeah. It's like, it's like, one pan is actually a good bit so, for one person. And so it will go for a while. And if you don't want- I can't hear him. The, uh, yeah, they can't hear you, Austin. He's saying that um, for one person, this is really nice quantity. You know, you only have to make it every couple of weeks yeah. and then you can eat it every day. Yeah, I like that you like came out with the amount the same that's taste. just perfect for one baking tray. I like that, that it's just like, all right, so I'm making a second batch here. So I have a got, question about the oil. Oh, I forgot to put the water in. So a uh, question about the oil, could you use ghee and not have the milk fats in the butter? Would it be more room temperature safe or because it has butter in it, does it need to be refrigerated or do you keep it at room temperature? I keep it at room temperature. I've never had a problem. Um, it didn't occur to me that it might be a problem, <laughs> but I've never had a problem. And I I've left it out overnight. Like the... I've made it at this time, just like left it in the cookie sheet on the stove top overnight, come back the next day and then packed it up and it's been okay. I would think that you're making ghee in the oven, you're baking off all the, the milk part and just leaving the fat. Yeah, I've only made it with butter and I think canola oil when I tried the oil. I didn't enjoy the oil as much as the butter, but I haven't experimented with different variants of the fat. Ooh, you should try ghee. Just yeah, concentrated. That would be good. I bet. <laughs> so I need a little more flour. I need my flour. Oh, um, I think any other questions? We've covered it all. I'm just stretching it out here, making another batch. Oh, I will also say the original recipe um, suggested molasses as a third sweetener, but I felt that the molasses took over completely and I couldn't taste anything else and it made cleanup really hard and it turned the granola dark color and I just eliminated it and feel very happy with the sweetness and stuff. I could see that molasses or sorghum molasses could be like more of a winter one. Yeah. You'd like a really like a darker taste to it and mm -hmm. just add a little bit to it. Right. But, um, like you said, it's probably a lot harder to clean. There's up a muffin taste. that I make that I really like that's like um, molasses and applesauce and raisins with and flour. Those are the main ingredients. And those are, I really enjoy those. And so I thought I'll just keep my molasses and use it for the thing that I like it in. Well, we'll have to have you come back on and teach us how to make that. Yeah, those are really easy too. My my, my go-to is um, fruit upside down cake. Mm -hmm. So just any kind of fruit chopped up, mixed with some brown sugar or molasses and a little um, cinnamon or, you know, apple pie spice or, you know. Yeah, that sounds it's good. You can make it seasonal. Right. And then you just put a uh, cake mix on the top. Then I don't have to, because I always seem to mess up a little bit making um, crusts. Like, so basically I'm making an upside down pie. It's, and it's a lot easier, I feel. So I can make a lot of candy that way. Very flavorful. I really like this recipe. It's so simple. Yeah, like I mean, I said, hopefully you enjoy eating it too, but... Uh, well, I mean, like I said, that I think this will be a way I'll make oatmeal. I mm -hmm. could just make all this and just right now add some water to it. Of course, not this big of a batch. I will say after the 30 minutes of baking, it still, I think, needs even more time to get crunchier. When I eat it straight away, warm out of the oven, it's good, but it's a little softer than I like. I like for granola to be crunchy. So it keeps, I mean, it keeps cooking after you take it out of the oven. Mm -hmm. so it... And even um, after it has some time to like air out or finish cooking in the air, whatever you want to say. So you, you do definitely take it out of the oven because like we used to do it, I don't know, about 30 minutes mm -hmm. and then just leave it in the oven, turn the oven off and just leave it in there with the pilot I would worry light on. it would burn if I did that. Oh yeah, that's true. 
at least with the ovens that I've had. Um, I will say even, you know, if when it gets to its crunchiest state, it's not as crunchy as the stuff I buy at the grocery store. Okay, my 10 minute timer nope. just went off, so I'm gonna pull it out to flip. Didn't put enough, uh, what is it, um, sugar on it. I think, oops, I think they put a lot of sugar on it and that makes it crunchier. I like that this is, I don't know, more natural. All right, so as far as the texture goes, the one with flour and the one without flour, it doesn't seem that different, except okay, that's good to know. my spoon has, it, it definitely sticks together more. As mm -hmm. you can see, my spoon has some on it. And so um, it does have a little bit of, you can tell the flowers in there. Yeah, so it seems the flour helps to keep it from sticking where you like the spoons or whatever. Oh, there's my it's more. Right? So let's see. It sticks together more and less to the spoon. Right. I guess we need to switch the camera so we can see your close up, huh? Can you see Austin's filming me? Can you see it? Yeah. Um, you have to switch the sound. Yeah, yeah. The sound's not on the phone anymore. So oh, they're having a the hard time hearing. Uh, just remember to turn the output of the speaker of the laptop off so you don't get feedback first. All right. Yeah, testing, is that any better? Yeah. Uh, okay. okay, great. Cool. So I've essentially just um, moved it around a bit. Moved it around, flipped it over, stuff. And then it's going back in. Another, well. I typically, you know, it takes me like maybe 30 seconds to do the flipping, maybe even a little less if I'm not talking. Um, so mine is definitely not crunchy at all as far as flipping mine. Yeah, that, it's, it's still early in the baking process. That's normal. Got it. Yeah. So just reset the timer for 10 minutes already. Okay. And it's going. Um, and we'll flip again in a little bit. And then after that, it'll be done when the, other timers when i'm just alone by myself and i and i set only for 10 minutes i lose track i say did i flip it once did i flip it twice so that's why i set the two timers but i think with all of us here paying attention we'll know <laughs> <laughs> i mean essentially you're just trying to get the moisture out and get it crunchy yeah and um kind of bake the around the dice so get it toasty yeah I guess that's what coasting is. is yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Making it crunchy. Yeah. All right. So my combinations of nuts are a little interesting because I had a pre-package of uh, pistachios, almonds, and pecan pecans. And Ooh. then I had some raw cashew. And then I had just the remnants of um, of um, actually dry roasted sunflower seeds, which about a quarter of a cup made it in. So they might get a little extra roasted, but I think it's gonna be good. Yeah, yeah. I think the nuts that I use are typically pre-roasted. Oh, it looks like we were using unsalted nuts this time. Yeah. I didn't realize that. I buy, I, I personally buy salted nuts, but I think, I guess Austin did not, but that's okay. I, that's what I've been using. And I didn't notice they were unsalted and it's just- now, I, I didn't ask about the oats themselves. Is there any type of, can you use any type of oats? Um, um, I would think I've oats only were, ever used old yeah. fashioned oats. My experience in oatmeal is that the steel cut oats take way, way, way longer to cook. I'd be a little worried about their texture. Like yeah. maybe they could still be used, but you just, you'd have to like cook them first or I don't know, maybe like the yeah. timing of everything couldn't be exactly the same. Um, and the instant oatmeal, I find it's just like very powdery. So I don't like that. Well, yeah, I mean, oatmeal, oatmeal is the powdered, um, but um, rolled oats is what I've always seen you use. Yeah, rolled oats or old fashioned oats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, versus quick oats, which are still mm -hmm. rolled oats, but they're kind of par cooked already. I guess I meant the instant ones, like the ones you would just instant pour. Oats, right. Instant is what I meant. I, I, I don't yeah. prefer those. All right. Um, if you want to talk, 
into the phone and do a final comment so we can see your face. <laughs> um, basically, thank you so much for sharing what a lot of people think is a you know a basic simple recipe but if you don't make it me and you think it's a simple recipe but i do yeah and and, and again you and, can personalize it and you simplified it way beyond what i grew up we always put dried fruit in it and i really like because my biggest complaint was the raisins tended to be burnt or really chewy yeah. And so I like your idea of just, if you do really like raisins, just add them at the end when you're done. Yeah. Or add them when you're eating it. I think I tried different dried fruits and I would either like if I use apricots or prunes, I'd have to cut them up and that was unpleasant. Um, uh, yeah, I just didn't like the way that the dried fruit cooked, but certainly it can be thrown on top when you're eating it and that enhances. All right. Yeah. You also Anybody don't have, have the fruit questions? to be sweetened by the honey and the maple syrup, you know. Yeah, the fruit wouldn't need sweetener. Have, have you ever used fruit juice? I never have, although I love muesli, which I make with just like oats and apple juice and cinnamon and raisins and apple slices and sunflower seeds and mix it together all raw. I mean, instead of that quarter cup of water, I don't see why we couldn't do a quarter cup of some kind of juice. Yeah, maybe, that's a great idea. Maybe some orange juice and it just gives it just a hint. I don't know. Or something to play. Juice. Here, here you got this simple recipe and I'm thinking of all these <laughs> ideas to complicate it. <laughs> right. Uh, to me, the, the way I've shown it is just like really simple um, and with stuff that I always have around. Yeah. So, but. yeah, I mean, the only thing I was, I was low on uh, sunflower seeds and I can't find my wheat germ, so. Well, hopefully but. it was a good investment to get those sunflower seeds. You can oh, they're all in the granola. Situation. Yeah. Oh, you are, you saw. My them. mom, my mom actually gave me that and she's like, how much do you need? I was like a half a cup. She's like, that's about all I've got. And I was like, well, it's just gonna all come back to you. So don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the best way to store it? I basically put it in my wheat germ jars. <laughs> okay um or any other thing with that like with a twist lid but you could put it in a tupperware container i just or a ziploc plastic ziploc bag yeah the, a jar that's what i do just something where the air isn't constantly on it but you say you make enough and it you probably use it all within a month yeah so i mean where i'm at things are pretty humid and mm -hmm. if you don't have something like after a while it'll start to with especially with It'll all that sugar in there a long time. Getting, and yeah, yeah maybe you don't want the pests smelling it <laughs> but um no i mean it should it should be just make it make it make enough for you know under a month worth right oh yeah and you could always I'm glad you have a timer i forgot to put my timer for the second time oh, okay mine is on three more minutes before we flip it the second time <laughs> So, yeah, th that's this is one of those ones because it's got so much uh, sweetness in it, mm -hmm. you could burn it really easily, I think. Yeah, yeah. And I sometimes I forget to put it at 325 and I do 350. That's too much. 325 is the correct temperature. So, um, I mean, have you ever tried a lower temperature for longer? I have not. I bet it would be good. I just don't like waiting. Waiting. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Thank you so much. Of course. Yeah. Thank We're you wrapping for it up. Uh, allowing me to lead this week. I've been looking forward to it. I've and enjoyed all the things I learned. I looked around weeks. and we've got people from four countries. All right. All right. And I think pretty much in all these countries, we have all these ingredients because sometimes that's not the case, so. That's true, that's true. And granola, it seems like a, a basic thing to me, but um, I was curious if in, in other countries it's something that people eat or not. Like, yeah, 
It's just that I never cook it, but I have tried mm -hmm. granola. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's quite expensive at the store. I don't. It's very true. It, I don't know how it shakes out with all these ingredients because, of course, um, nuts are kind of expensive. I still spend some money on the ingredients here, but somehow I prefer to have ingredients that I can use for multiple things, even if I spend money on nuts versus paying four or five dollars for a tiny box of granola at the store. And that's all it is. Well, maybe I'll convert cereals. you to making your own yogurt the similar way. So yeah, yeah, it's not, yeah, not too hard. So, mm -hmm. and then, then what it, part of it is if you find a type of yogurt, because you know, yogurt has different bacteria. Sure. If you find the type of yogurt that you really like that flavor, you can replicate it. The hard thing is, is sometimes because you might use different qualities of milk, the mm. hard thing is, is to get that same texture. That might be okay. a little harder. So, yeah. All right. One more minute.